want to represent you, Mr. Kesh. It's our guru for the workshop. So some words from you, Mr. Kesh. Uh, so wait, wait, Lilia. So we connect already li live? Yes, we are live. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So just we started with uh, Mr. Kesh, and then I suggest you some everyone to say a couple of words for to represent herself. Um, good morning. Buenos good morning. dias. Buenos dias. Um, <laughs> do we have Dirk or you online? Dirk still is not online. And you? Yes, the location online. You are here. Armen, Godrez, Rick. Uh, good morning, you. Good morning, uh, Yes. Adriana. Okay, we start. Um, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Elia. Uh, yes. You've well, done a lot of work to get this thing together for the first time. And uh, I'm sure you're going to get used to this. You're going to do a lot of this regularly. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, what I would like to, if we can start, um, uh, to put uh, for you to put questions across, and then we'll start as usual, the same way. You go ahead and put the questions, or we discuss what you want to discuss. So, today the subject will be Gang's anatomy of the human body. So, I think better to start with the explanation what is exactly mean the Gang's first, and how you are able to understand the Gang's anatomy of the human body. The, of the okay. Um, the first thing is, I don't know who or if you have read the, um, the paper regarding the creation of CO2 or absorption of the CO2 in the solid state, <coughs> where uh, for the first times we could convert and uh, show different state of material. At the moment, we are used to the three or four states of matter, which we talk about, like um, solid, liquid, and gas. And we, at this present time, we consider plasma as another state of matter, which is uh, really wrong. There is no such a thing, because um, if you consider um, solid, it's already made of combination of at least two plasmas, which is a plasma of um, electron and a plasma of proton. So why plasma is considered under the state of matter, I don't understand, but it's irrelevant. These the states of solid gas and liquid, these are all environmental conditions. What this means is that if you change the environment of the entity, entity will manifest itself in different states of observation. If you increase the pressure or increase the temperature, you go in one way or another, you go from solid to liquid, liquid to gas, or vice versa, if you increase or decrease one of the parameters of the environmental area. <coughs> the state of gas is a new state, which means you can keep the temperature and the pressure the same, but you change the gravitational magnetic field of the entity. This is what we never understood. <clears throat> the whole situation with the physics has been 
that we always considered what is around us and within our physical tangibility of observation and touching. So, we never considered that the same entity, now that we understand the structure of the plasma, can have different strength or variation in the strength, and this can lead to the entity to show itself as the state of the three matters, which is a gas, liquid, or solid, <coughs> but only with the change of the gravitational and magnetic field of itself or its environment. And when we observe this new phenomenon of the change of gravitational magnetic field strength, then we create a or we come across of entities or what we call structures where we see these entities connect and behave even though they look like the elements we know but their behavior is totally different. So this means the material even though it looks and it shows itself, let's say, as oxygen, but you can have the oxygen in a solid state at the room temperature. Just because you haven't changed the temperature or pressure, but you have changed the gravitational magnetic field of its environment or itself. <coughs> then, this is what, in so many ways, people have been looking, for example, superconductors. When you change the characteristics or you change the strength of the field, then the same material uh, behaves as a superconductor or the best insulator or anything you expect of it of different structure. In different languages, we have chosen different words for the same thing but now we call it a um, um, uh, uh, different kind of nanostructures. I'm getting a feedback. Hello? Who is speaking now? I'm getting a feedback. I can hear myself back. Okay. It's okay. It is echo. It's a echo. It suddenly came on, somebody switched something up. So, this is what we call a GANS. So, what we did years ago, um, we uh, set out um, to produce such a condition that you can change <coughs> the characteristic of the element by change of its uh, magnetic gravitational field of its environment or itself. Um, I wrote originally about three, four years before that such a material can be produced <coughs> and it took us about a lot of experiments to show that this material can be produced and we produced it initially in different structures and then we produced it as um, absorption of gases into solid state or the state of tangibility or visibility. So, we cannot see CO2, but uh, if we convert, uh, if we create I get a feedback again. If we um, create a condition uh, that the material can or the element can have that required condition, um, then the gases manifest themselves as solid or as a visible entity. This entity what we saw the first time 
did not have the characteristics of the normal matter as we are used to as a liquid or as a solid. It behaves totally different and uh, it feels different and uh, it is, its characteristics is totally different than the same material. <laughs> then it was the position of understanding and trying to explain what you do. In so many ways, if the environment is correct, <coughs> then you create these materials. You have to create the two things, as I always say. You have to create a condition. So, I created a condition. The condition allows the gases like CO2 in a gas form to be converted into CO2 as a tangible material. So, now we see CO2 as a physical mm, entity at the room temperature and the pressure. This, this uh, matter ends up to behave totally different. First of all, um, it does not stick together the way we, we, uh, we are used to with the solids or with liquids. <coughs> the, 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 the material, what we call GANS, it's very much like little spheres, it's like little balls. <coughs> it slides over each other. It can be connected. You can create a condition where by changing the, um, its environment, like its moisture around it, to behave more like a gel or to behave like a solid. But it doesn't become solid to dry and fall does not behave that way. doesn't matter how long you hold it. We hold, I hold now samples of it for nearly five or six years now. Maybe less, maybe more. But it stays always very much like jellish, very much like um, uh, material sliding over each other. You don't get a solid, solid matter. I have not managed to reach that point. This is still you can manipulate it. <coughs> but, because now, in a matter, you have or you achieve uh, like electrical connections in the motion and movement of electrons. When you cross a current across a wire, like a copper wire, your uh, energy transfer is through physical vibration. So, when you have a physical movement, you lose energy and you have time lapse. But with this, these scans, because the connection is in the dimension of the elect what you call magnetic and gravitational fields, because they do not connect to each other like solid, but they keep in touch with each other, the same current will go through as a magnetic field another vibration, physical vibration. So, the transfer of energy, the transfer of information is literally instantaneous. This is what we call superconductors. They behave this way. And then you see the there is a wind blow noise in the background. It's less now. So, you see a totally different behavior from the same material or the same type of material as we know as solid. So, the difference between the two material, let's say if you have a CO2 as a solid or if you have a copper as a solid and you want to transfer information across it, like an electron, uh, what do you call it, vibration, that's a physicality. So, you have a physical movement of the electron. With these GANs, or what are called super superconductors, because we never knew them before, because the interaction and interconnection is on a gravitational magnetic field, 
everything is instantaneous. This, then they behave like superconductors. They behave the minute you touch in one end, the other end you can measure. So, <coughs> when you understand the behavior of this new material, what we call GANs, or what we call superconductors, you'd like to call them, at room temperature and pressure, this explains a lot of mystery, mysteries which we had. The people were trying to develop superconductors for years, that it can be done in a normal way. And then you try to explain how in a, an atmospheric condition such a thing is possible. Then um, the clear structure is the human body. The human body, um, on its own, um, I consider it in all my talks, if you've been to them, I consider the body of a man as a galaxy. So, in, in a galaxy, when a star or a planet is interconnected with another star or another planet or its star, these um, entities or different stars in a galaxy they don't interconnect with electrons and vibration and frequencies and hertz. They connect in gravitational magnetic fields. So, you see, that's why you, I've, I've recently even explained in uh, one, of, uh, one of the papers which I've written, that um, this um, a speed of light, which Einstein speaks about, this ultimate <coughs> speed, which is all nonsense, is in so many ways is a physicality. So, the light of a star is observed and can be detected, if it's not observed, instantaneously in another star, because their connection is in a Gans state. The connection is electromagnetic connection in an, uh, another matter condition. So, you find that uh, what we say it takes a thousand light years to get to a planet, if you can create the same electromagnetic fields as a gravity and magnetic field of the star or where you are in respect to the star, you can reach the star instantaneously. This time lapse of a thousand light years, this is all nonsense. This is what is we have believed because this was the strength of our understanding according to say the speed of light is the maximum. The speed of light is a maximum speed in a matter state. Not beyond the matter state's magnetic gravitational field of strength. So, now you bring the whole thing into the body of the man. The body of the man, it's a beautiful uh, sausage with a hole in the center. The hole in the center which is what is your mouth and the anus. So, everything else around it is all its own galaxy. Then you put arms in it, legs in it, you put uh, liver and kidneys and whatever else you put in it. These are all in a beautiful state of vacuum of within the skin of the man. Then, when you get to that state, <coughs> you put our sun in respect to the nearest sun. It doesn't take a thousand years to get there, a thousand light years or five hundred light years. Because the, of the interconnection between gravitational magnetic fields, the connection is instantaneous and continuous and permanent. Now, you put, make a star your toe and another star your brain. You touch, you feel, instantaneously, because the communication is in Gans state. So, there is no need for transfer of information as an electron. The transfer of information is electromagnetic, as gravitational magnetic field. Then you understand further why we do not need to have nerves in different positions in every single cell of the body. Because every material inside the body behaves as electron, as a, what do you call it, as an element of a Gans. And it converts and transfers this information instantaneously 
to the past speed line, what we call the neural system, which the neural systems are themselves a material with structure of the crystal structure orientation. These ganses behave the same way. Depends on how they are positioned themselves. If you put the information across them in a certain way which they are connected to each other, they behave like a superconductor. If you put the information uh, along them, they go all the way down very fast. But if you put the information across them, they are insulated from transferring information and energy together. To show this, in uh, in uh, in the experiment or in the presentations, I usually show um, gans of CO2 and I show the gans of CH4, methane gas. One is green and one is white. <coughs> and usually, if you have two solids, they don't mix. If you if you have two liquid, they mix in colors. If you have a gas, it's the same. If you have different color gas, you see the mixture, they become one or become combination of two colors. With the gas, they never mix. We've done this so many times. I've, I've tried to shake it. I've put it in a shaker. The minute you leave it, different balls of different color sit together, separated. You cannot mix them together. So, this shows the behavior of gravitational magnetic field of the structure, how they connect to each other according to their own strength. Then you understand how the fibers of different strength in the tissue are created and how some become liver and some become brain structure and even within the brain structure where we don't see any connections but we see a, a, um, amalgamation of different uh, ganses. And that's why we see no wires, because it depends how they orient themselves. One part of the brain automatically communicates to the other one. It doesn't need, because it doesn't need wire connections. It only needs magnetic gravitation and orientation of the rotation. So, now we understand how the brain works, why there are no wires in the brain. Because brain, the whole structure of the brain is in a gas state, but small little, what do you call it, balls of this material, which is a combination of the structure of the proton, of electrons, of or electron and protons, of amino acids, or what builds the primary structure of life in that position in the universe. The primary position combination on Earth is what has been available on Earth. We haven't come from another planet. We have, nobody has brought us, mm, uh, spaceships brought us, dropped us here and they went. Or they came and introduced something to us and they went. No. Every environment creates its own creation. On Earth, the creation is combination of what is available on Earth and is what we call the basic amino acids or the sugars because of the condition they are. You have to look, carbon is one of the main components of this planet, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. And then you have to understand how the gases of these um, elements have come together, what condition has brought them together, what, how long has it taken for the combination to come together. All the animals, all the um, different plants are not created uh, all over the earth when it was uh, there, when it was uh, life started on it. A certain condition was created where the environment had the right condition for, first of all, hydrogen and oxygen to come together to make the water or the liquid condition, but not as a water because the liquidity of the 
the, the tangibility, physical tangibility and connection of the amino acid is the connection between the oxygen and hydrogen. Where oxygen is the star. It's the star because it's the one which holds everything else together. Then the environment over time has changed in the same area with whatever reason that it has attracted to itself a carbon or oxygen has connected to, to CH which has already was made established connection together. Then the environment has come to be able to absorb the main ingredients of the atmosphere which was a nitrogen and the whole combination has set in the environment where could change these as element to GANS. Then that's how life has started. This will happen anywhere in the universe. You do not need nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon or oxygen to start interconnection into a GANS of fast communication, superconductivity as single molecule, a single entity to start life. And then when you connect these together, then you start, they have to communicate, then that's how now for the first time we understand the structure of the physics in respect to chemistry and in respect to biology, how matters became life or living things, call it a plant, call it a human being, a dog, whatever. So now you have to understand what does what. You need a source to hold on to. You need something to hold everything together. The, the matter in the amino acid of human being which holds everything together is oxygen because it's the heaviest, it's the biggest. The sun controls all the weaker planets around it. So you need a focal point. You need something that you can hold everything together. You have oxygen, which is the gravitational center point for holding these amino acid elements together, but in a gas state. Then you need an element which can be the releaser of energy. What is the releaser of energy? The release of energy or conformation or accepting energy from other matters is usually the lightest one, is the fastest one who can run and can make connections direct but in a gas state. So you have your uh, energy releaser or the one who can swap very quickly because it doesn't have too much uh, elements within it. That's the hydrogen. Then you need a communication line between this unit and the next unit in an ordinary constant, what do you call it, a strength. You need something which is stable, which can make communication or connection as representative of all these four entities with the other neighbors. Line of communication. This is left to carbon because of its gravitational magnetic field uh, structure. Then what you need is somebody who can bring the energy or extra gravitational magnetic field when it's needed to allow the hydrogen to be able to release the energy or absorb the energy that can be instantaneously be used in conjunction with carbon. Then this comes the element of nitrogen. Nitrogen is in fact the triggerer. Nitrogen when it receives certain conditions of its environment or its neighbors, it reacts. Its reaction is release of extreme ultraviolet in that condition is motion, is vibration, is release of energy allows the electron of hydrogen to release the energy and it allows the carbon to transfer that as a communication energy to the cells next door or extra outside. 
then you understand how the structure of life anywhere in the universe can be repeated. And life is not exclusivity of this planet. When you have the condition, <clears throat> then you understand why. Then you go back to the beginning of time, how these conditions was created. You see how, what condition was needed for carbon to come in connection with hydrogen or carbon to come in connection with oxygen and then you understand in that position how superconductivity or GANS becomes a totally different player in communication. It's a single entity then it communicates even it stays with the same level. Then you see and you understand why our being, if you touch your muscles, is soft, is jelly type, is not is not solid. Even the bone, even though it looks as to be solid, is actually in a in a matter state than the Gans state. Uh, this is a condition which has changed, it's a mixture up between the two. The bone calcium is the only one which, because of its gravitational magnetic field, it behaves totally different in, in, its, in its structure, as a gans or as a matter. So, what you see, creation. What you see is called gans. What you call now, how you want to interconnect <coughs> these ganses of what you call molecules of amino acid into what strength and what compactness together and to what softness and to what formation. The way they combine, the way they connect, the way they interact, the way they come together in conjunction with other elements be it copper, be it zinc, be it um, uh, other matters of the heavier gravitational fields, then it decides in conjunction with the information which comes from different control systems within the body, if you're going to have a, a fiber of a muscle, if you have a fiber of the tendon, if the lymph stays in a liquid state across the body. How it stays liquid across the body? Why the blood is in a liquid state even if it's gans and it can flow through the body? Then you understand how the brain has divided itself into two parts. This is part which we talk later on, that um, my, the way I work and now with more research we see more of that changes the whole world of the biology and the physicality of the man. Understanding of his operation is regarding the initial part which is us as being, as entities, not as a human being, but as being which was the initial position of the superconductivity between the ganses of these elements is our part, what we call the emotional part of the brain. That emotional part, what we call the inner part of the brain, if you even look at its structure, has a different structure than the rest of the brain, this is the part where we initially as beings existed. But this being, this part, on its own, needed access or it needed a um, need, a demand for it to be more active that it can absorb or be able to feed itself from the environmental energy. Because on Earth, <coughs> now it became a gans within the matter. So, over time, billions of years, as these things developed within, it tried to find somebody who can move it around, or it went to the state of keeping itself as one entity, what I call the emotional part of brain, and 
allowed itself to be able to become mobile, to have access to more a constant supply of energy. This, what I call, is the leech part, which is your structure of the outer brain, that controls all the physicality. If you look, the inner part has not much to do with the physical movement of the man, but the external part of the brain is the part where what I call the leech, which is attached itself to the main part, and the main part has established a link to be able to be mobile, and it's created the physical part, which is controls the arm. It created the arm to be able to reach things. It created the leg to be able to walk. When it was a fish, it didn't need it. There is a question mark about the evolution of the man, but we have to look at it in a different way nowadays. Then one frees the other one. The, the, the brain, the emotional brain, allows and it has allowed part of itself or its process or its technology to be used by the physical part and as a compensation the physical part allows the transfer of the energy which is needed for its operation to be used to go around pick up a fruit, eat an animal, breathe and oxygen to keep the emotional part going. This is why when we when we see brain operations where the top part of the brain is taken away due to cancer or whatever, the man still exists. The man still feels and has emotion, but then he loses his physicality because the original brain is the emotional part. This is the part which is connected and is part of uh, what we call connection with the soul, with the other part which is created at the same time parallel with the connection of these matters. So you can take the arm and leg of the man away, but as long as the emotional part is operational, you have an entity, so you don't need to carry the body. Maybe in the future times, when you want to send somebody somewhere, you send the, the emotional part in a small package. When he gets there, he creates his own arm and legs according to the environment. But this is futuristic, make it is possible. So now <clears throat> you look in the next structure of the body of the man. The next structure of the body of man, most of the doctors like Kelia or the scientific world says the, brain, the body has its own brain, like the stomach has its own brain. Yes, this is correct, because what has happened over time, this um, information transfer from the physical part to the emotional part and to the part which is supposed to be a connection between the rest of the emotion and the physical part could not carry all these informations to the brain. What does this mean? It means that <clears throat> if you have a liver or let's say if you have a stomach or if you have a kidney, um, these carry body has built up functions for it. Why they are there? These need control system of their own because the amount of the information they need to carry the daily duty of which I am, for example, for the gland over the kidney, which material I'm going to take out, or how much is in reserve in different part of the body, uh, what I need to take out for the a different part of the body, this is very much like a function of the brain. It's a function of control system. Glands are control system. So what has happened over billions of years, brain has divided or allowed part of itself to be monotonous in the, in the location of need. So it doesn't need to transfer so much energy to the brain through the spinal cord. So if you're a medical person, you've got to understand, and you understand more now with this, hopefully these lectures, that your glands are part of your brain, but monotonous, localized. It's like when you have a government, you don't need to report everything to the president. Locally, you have a flood, you need the hospital, you make a decision in the local area. So, glands are part of the structure of the control and part of the brain structure. And if they were not put separately in these positions, the amount of information which they carry to, for example, to process the, uh, for the kidney, it would have been so much traffic on the brain that uh, people would have been walking like asbestos all the time because so much was going up and down the brain. So 
This is something you have to understand separate, that all the glands are control system and are part of the brain. Then you understand the world of biology changes totally. Then we understand why we have these glands, why we have thymus, why we have um, uh, glands over the kidney, why we have glands in different names as um, pancreas, as something else which is there, the what we call thyroid glands, parotheroid glands. These are all control rooms that are part of the brain, but being given their own, their own uh, responsibility in their own area. Then you have to understand about the position of them, why they are there, why they are in that position, why you have your um, thymus over your stomach, just on top of your heart, why you have thyroid glands under your throat, why you have glands over your kidney, why you have glands in different positions in the body. You don't find a gland in your leg. You don't find a gland in your arms. These glands are positioned in respect to the community they serve and the thing they need to do for other communities. It's very much like um, if you live in one part of the country and you have access to the fish, you don't eat fish only for yourself. You catch a fish and you see which other part of the country needs fish, you send it to them you export to them. But they tell you how much fish they want. If the people in that city don't like fish, you can't sell a single fish. And if in that country, the only that part of the country, they only eat fish on Friday, you send all the fish there on Friday, not on the Monday, because it has to wait till Friday before it's consumed. So, even though separate, but they know what other parts need and what they have to take. So, the brain part connects in the demand of the other parts with the the, with the sexual part of the body, with the glands. Then, the easiest way to look at the structure of the body of a man is just stand outside and look what you have. Body of a man is very, very simple. It's been made complicated because it gives the title of scientists and doctors. <coughs> but body of a man is a very, very simple position. You have an operating room, which is the brain, you have a system where you need to bring the need of the body, which is your arms and your legs. Then you have a digestion system, which is your stomach, your guts. What comes in has to be cooked. It's the same, you go and buy a potato, you can't just eat the potato raw. You have to cook it. So it goes in a pot. The pot is the stomach. Then when it's cooked, you have to, uh, what do you call it, mix it, to put it together. Whatever is cooked, that it comes the right taste, the right combination. Then absorb from it what is possible. Then it becomes your intestine, and then what is not needed is discharged. So you have a process of cooking. Then the other part of it is the storage part, which is your liver. Then you have a couple of other bits which needs the control of these systems to be uh, able to transfer the, what you've um, taken out of the food, which is your lymph. And then you have a cleaning up system, a sewage system to go around and clean, which is your blood system. A lot of people say blood system is a feeding system. Blood system is a sewage system according to what I work and it seems to be correct. This is why the blood goes around and cleans up whatever is left over, nobody needs anything, okay, I clean up. And <clears throat> there, there are two reasons. The blood is a cleaner. If for things not to infest and not to go wrong, we put oxygen in it. That's why we see the high level of oxygen in the blood system, because it keeps its oxygen. It allows a large amount of energy to be available that things don't go bad and stay the way they are till they're taken up and they're taken back out. So at the same time, oxygen is transfer of energy around the body. Then you understand how energy can be transferred so easily by the oxygen in a cancer state in the blood to the other parts of the body. In reality, then you understand the operation. Now we understand 
with the, the transfer is very easy because everything is in a state of counts, not in a state of matter. 